Hi, everybody, and welcome. Today I have a special guest, DDA. Uh, did I pronounce that right? You nailed it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, DDA is a coach. Um, I met him at a, at a workshop a few weeks ago in Boston. And uh, from the moment I met you, just knew you were cool. It was like, you're gonna be on one of these video blogs. I am gonna move forward with you. I don't know in what capacity we're gonna, you know, maybe coach or, you know, do a video blog or whatever it is. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for that sweet, uh, generous introduction. The feeling is mutual. And so I'm, I'm happy just to have one small uh, chance to reconnect. Yeah, well, you don't have one small chance. It's gonna be any time you'd like. So I have a feeling we're gonna do a whole, uh, series of, of these. So yeah, yeah, you know, I, a, a conversation we had that I was wondering if you uh, would be open to having here is, first of all, one of the coolest things you said to me when we first met was that you use your music in your coaching. Mm -hmm. And one of the questions a lot of people ask me uh, is, can I really, you know, incorporate what I love and make good money at it? Mm -hmm. And I say, you're never actually going to make the money that you could make if you aren't doing what you love. So you got to figure out a way to put it together. And I love talking to you uh, about music and, and how you do that. So will you tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, mm -hmm. how you merge your passions? And by the Beautiful. way, I'm going to be drinking a little bit of tea here too. Yeah, great. I'll be doing the same. So <laughs> okay. beautiful. Um, yeah, no, beautiful question. Thank you for that. Um, I, I, I come across that question too in my work and in a way that's kind of one of the most common questions that actually um, comes up in coaching engagements if not necessarily about music definitely this question about kind of alignment between one's passions one's gifts or talents and what they might perceive to be the needs of the world and what they need and where the alignment is of all those things yeah. so so that question is right on point. <laughs> that resonates. Um, I mean, if you work in an organization, the yeah. first question you have to ask yourself is, are my gifts and skill sets meeting a need of this organization? Mm. And if that's not true, that's when emptiness sets in and then burnout starts to happen, mm. right? Because you've disconnected from the spiritual aspect of what matters to you. Mm -hmm. Right, you're just doing a job to get a paycheck, and in the end, after a while, there's no meaning and no sense. But both of us work on our own. So, yeah. So we have yeah, a, both of we have a unique situation of being entrepreneurial. Right, 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 and also uh, um, we've done some some work, and maybe I imagine we've received different types of support. I imagine also to also discern that very question of what it is we need, um, mm -hmm. because it seems sometimes without even having some support or clarity on that, it's difficult to discern that question when we enter any organization or enter any partnership or any, any, any relation. Right? Yeah, so tell me what you mean by that. Give me an example, like a particular example of something you need. Yeah, so something I need is space to, and, and um, trust to bring my creative, um, gifts and interests to everything that I do. So including, for example, you asked about music. I mean, I, I don't bring my um, pre-recorded compositions or some of my instruments, you know, my drums or my bowls or my flutes or thinking about voice. Like I don't bring all of that to every client engagement. <laughs> it's all available. It's always available. Um, but I, that's just a discernment based on, um, uh, my perception of the needs of the circumstance or the client or the moment or the horizon. Mm -hmm. And, and to me, that's something that I need for me to be authentically who I am. It also happens to be something that's nothing more than just one tool um, towards, towards whatever the client, I mean, to me, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be, um, you know, breaking out a drum or two drums. If we're having a conversation, if the client and I are having a conversation about, um, self-reliance and the, the journey and practice of moving from a self-reliant way of monologuing in one's head to a partnership, trusted, 
practice of dialogue with another and maybe the drums offer some type of space for us to practice that type of trust um like that's a to me that's a that that's a more obvious and maybe um clear example on how music would could play in as a tool but it it could be it could be watercolors or it could be yeah. um it could be any any tool i just mm -hmm. I, I i think the point that's been coming to me is just thinking about music as nothing more than a technology and just a tool like any other that we use in um some of this type of work yeah Does that I, make sense? I, yeah that makes so much sense and you know, I'm thinking, you know, of all the various uses, almost like when a group is out of sync, how cool it would be to get everybody with a drum or with some instrument and just yeah. beginning without speaking hmm. and just beginning with having them get in rhythm with each other. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Like yeah. I can, I, I'm already like seeing when you say like dialogue, I use it to help two people get into dialogue. And now my whole, my whole, uh, my whole creative side is thinking. So a couple thoughts. The yeah. first one is that I think sometimes it's really good to get people out of their logical, linear, analytical thinking in order totally. to come up with creative possibilities. Yeah. Right. Totally. Totally. And so if we can get them in their body, however we do it. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. I do it through guided imagery. Sometimes I use drawing. And there's a way that I ask them, you know, people get all nervous, like, oh, my God, I can't draw well. And I always say, can you make a mess? Because <laughs> I am asking you to make a mess. Can you do that? And they say yes. And I say, great. So I'm going to say a phrase, and I want you to draw any way that your hand wants to move, and your job is to make a mess. Mm. Right? And so all of a sudden, it takes all the pressure. Like, oh, yeah, I can make a mess. And so let me, let me circle back here. So yes. definitely creative use of what you love. So first of all, knowing who you are and what you love yourself is step one. Mm. Because you can blame an organization or a community for not giving you what you want. But if you don't know what that is, mm -hmm. it's like there's a bunch of people walking around who are really, they don't know what their passion is or what they love, but they're really mad someone else isn't giving it to them. Right. The opportunity to do it. So number yeah. one step sounds like know what you're passionate about, develop your own uh, skill set there. Two feels like have the courage to trust yourself to bring it into a setting that is different. Hmm. And three is be open to the response and making a mess because it might work, it might not. Mm -hmm. But it's almost the willingness to give it a shot and receive the feedback from the situation to see if it's working for the client. Yeah, totally, totally. Yeah, all, all, those, all those resonate with me. I'd say another, uh, uh, some other steps kind of involved there seem to be around um, having, after doing a bit of practice um, and making messes all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's, there starts to be a kind of um, uh, uh, a capacity to to develop some criteria for how we make choices on on when and where we make messes, um, because yeah. it seems to me that part of part of my uh, at least personally some of my journey and and learning about uh, this kind of practice and, and coaching and facilitation and training has involved. Um, uh, doing a lot of kind of reactively uh, going along with um, whatever, um, whatever circumstances or organizations or jobs I may have found myself in in the past and, and kind of numbing or neglecting my own truth and a kind of, um, a kind, of uh, kind of reactive cobbling through life. And um, it seems to me that something, something that often comes up at least in some of the work that, that I do with coaching, and I wonder if you've seen this too, is um, the work that people can do or are calling to do to build their own capacity for choice making and build their own um, approach to choice making in life, which may include like criteria, you know, for, for what it is that I want and what it is that I need. Um, yeah, so this... The, the, the mess making seems to be like helpful yeah. in 
uh, in learning about the choices I want to be making and what my variables and, and criteria might be. Yeah. <laughs> so the that. idea of making a mess, right, is yeah, about the idea of allowing ourselves to put something on the page or make a mistake and have grace for ourselves because we won't take any risks if we won't if we aren't willing to get it wrong yeah and you know there's there's areas of my life that i take great risk and there's areas of my life that i don't take risks mm -hmm. and it's usually based on my past experience and my ability to trust myself in navigating that space so in medicine i have in my career I have been willing to take great risk. I have been willing to deviate off the path of being a traditional doctor in a hospital in a white coat, uh, seeing patients. I've now created a really creative practice where private clients, um, you know, pay me outside the system. I work with them for the whole year. Um, I communicate with their doctors and I kind of help facilitate getting them off meds, not on them. Now that's a different kind of doctor, right? Yeah. And, and also going in and taking toxic cultures and turning them into healing organizations, right? Awesome. So it's not just executive coaching. It's not just team and culture coaching. It's also addressing the physiology and the stress that we're all under and how our inability to communicate makes us physically ill and makes us less able to perform over the yeah. long And so I've been really creative in those realms. But I'll tell you, in love not so creative, like protected, guarded, you know, I have my own realms in the world where I've been hurt. And I then have like an elaborate system of guarding that yeah. goes on. And yeah. so I think one of the questions that I'd ask anybody watching really is in what arenas of your life do you trust yourself? And mm -hmm. trust yourself enough to make a mess, met like metaphorically and uh, maybe physically in the world, right? Get, that, that you're willing to take risk. And in what areas of your life have you figured out from a young age that it wasn't safe? Yeah. And maybe that's part of what stops you in your career and in your, you know, world. So your thoughts on that? Beautiful. Yeah, no, totally beautiful. I, I think that's a great question. And um, part of what, just a tie in music for a second. Part of what um, I think uh, practice with music in group settings might uh, make possible, certainly this is something that, that I'm super excited to always offer and, and create spaces for, is um, creating a, a pulse that we all, everyone in the space can all engage with yeah. And a pulse is something that is actually, that's, that's, I mean, you know, we often say, oh, I don't draw, right? It's like, oh, I'm not musical. Or I can't do music. I can't, like, like okay, well, you have a pulse? <laughs> <laughs> sure do. So how about we start there? Because that's actually all that we need. Oh, so. A kind of reminder that yeah. we are held in yeah. a pulse yep. that is shared. Yep. Right, and so we establish that pulse. Yeah, right? and it's it's amazing. Like you would you'd be able to explain this better than I could. I always freestyle my way through it, but I imagine there's some type of process happening where we're telling our brains, mm -hmm. "I'm safe. I'm safe. Yep. I'm safe." Right. Okay. Some type so of. Yeah. I'm gonna tell this to you. So I gave. Yeah, it to break you. it down, please. <laughs> I gave the TEDx talk, and it's called TEDx San Luis Obispo, and the title of it's called the Community Cure. Ah. So I have one that's called the communication cure. That's TEDx Berkeley. That's different. This one's called the community cure. I love and it. What it's about is, first of all, we only heal in community. Like we mm. only, you know, getting healthy is a team sport. Um, if somebody's feeling burned out or feeling exhausted, like the only way we get rid of shame, this is Brene Brown's work, but it's, uh, is by speaking about it in a trusted space and letting it out. Shame only grows mm -hmm. in darkness. The other mm -hmm. thing is we only reach our full potential, right, in community. Now, I don't think everyone is the right community. I think you have to surround okay. yourself by the right community, especially when you're taking risks, especially when you need trust around you and within you. So I talk about the physiology of, so why is it that as a doctor, 
I can put the leads of an EKG on the top of your skin and get a reading of the heart inside of it. It's because the electrical rhythm of your heart is emanating out. The, be the beating of your heart, actually the rhythm uh, is, is emanating out vibrationally. Well, mm. we've only been able to measure it about three feet of a radius around us. So when you're in, when you're with people, within about 10 minutes, you can either feel like, oh, like something doesn't, like, I don't know, I don't like the energy here. I don't like the way I feel. Mm -hmm. Or you want someone to move back, back up because they're in your space. That is often that our hearts didn't go into rhythm together. Mm -hmm. And when you're close mm -hmm. to people, your hearts start to beat in rhythm. Mm -hmm. And not always necessarily at exactly the same pace, but it's, it's a frequency. They start to go into rhythm together. So the entity studying all of this is called Heart Math. Heart Math. Heart mm -hmm. Math, if people want to look that up. And um, it's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a thing. Like, that's great. That's beautiful. Thank you for mentioning that, Heart Math. Awesome. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, it seems to, like in the, the realm of sound and music, we often describe that as entrainment. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Similar, similar idea. Yeah. And you feel it. You feel when you're in the flow with yourself. You feel it when you're in the flow with everybody else. So, DDA, thank you so much for bringing your passion, your talents, your gifts, your skill sets, and incorporating them in what you do to make it possible to heal you, serve others, and impact the world in a more aligned and creative way. Beautiful. Thank you. You, you call it the, the, the me, you call it a me, you, we, how did you describe heal me, it? Heal me, right? Yeah. It must heal you. The music must heal you. Totally. While it serves we, so we. now collectively um, others can feel that as well and uh, get the benefit of tapping into something, the pulse or the rhythm, right? They, they get to feel it in their body as you then align and impact the world in a way yes. that is more unifying and um, beautiful. Yes, yes, that's what we're here for. And so thank you, thank you for that mirror. Thank you for that mirroring. Thank you for creating this space to, to amplify and proliferate all this work. And I'm grateful for you. Mm, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. So Likewise. see you later. Bye.